Check it out, Breaking Records Radio, you know what it is. We got a special guest here. This is another episode of Rap Nerds, and you know we got another rap nerd with us. My man, Junk, how's yeah. it going, my G? I'm chilling, man. I'm shaking him like Michael J. Fox in the earth. <laughs> I know, it's a little cold out here. Wait, Folks, it's okay. Unfortunately, we, it's okay. uh, you know, they got the music going in the no, spot No, it's good, now. it's good. Thank you for having me on your show, bro. I appreciate it. Hey, no <laughs> doubt, man. You know, the last one we did, it was on Zoom, but it was really dope. I re-listened to COVID. it all today. Yeah, COVID, yeah. It was COVID. And it was really dope, though. Like, there's a lot of dope stuff that we touched on. Dope. It. So if anybody oh, hasn't doing seen it. it, anybody hasn't seen it, check that interview out. Junk interview, Breaking Records Radio. But this one, this one's going to be even more special because they're always better in the flesh, you know? That's true. But we got my man Junk here. And, hey. um, what, well, you know, I'd ask how the tour's been going, but I know that there's been some ups and downs. So I don't know if you even want to get into it. I mean... Yeah, it's just ups and downs. Let's not even get into that, bro. Yeah, we don't need to. Um, one thing I will say, though, is um, last time we talked, we spent like 10 minutes at the beginning talking about uh, the new launch of Stealth Bomb Records. Mm. Now, this is a couple years ago, but since then, um, I don't believe you've been re- you've released your latest releases through them, have you? It's okay. been Household. Yeah, it's all Household. Okay. Um, the last Stealth Bomb thing that I released was uh, the Lions Eat Goats. Was it Lions Eat Goats? Uh, that was like... Me and Stitch, that was a one album thing. We were just going to release that album under the oh, Stealth okay, Bomb imprint. Okay. Yep. Um, I still, Stealth Bomb is, I mean, that's family. You yeah. Know, that's Snack and Co. So, but I've just been releasing everything under Household and just, I'm trying to dive into um, making Household like my own brand. Yeah. In, in production and in throwing shows and just becoming its own agency in multiple platforms mm-hmm. and whatnot. So that's why I've really been pushing that brand. But it, there's no like discrepancies with Stealth Bomb. That was a, yeah. that was a calculated decision just to do that record because I felt that music was a... It made sense to release it under Stealth Bomb because yeah. it was very gritty and kind of aggressive and yeah. whatnot, which was kind of the Stealth Bomb brand. So, And and they can kind of help give it a certain push too, did, which is perfect. Yo, yeah, sure, 100%. So, and we got Snack on the record, yeah. and D-Rec doing cuts and all that. So... Um, yeah, that, that was a conscious decision to do that album just under Stealth Bomb. But after that, it's all been house. It's all been house. Yeah. And um, with that being said, too, like, because you were talking before this, you had mentioned that just as, as of, the, I think, the last year, you said that you've been taking on your, being basically your own booking agent and everything. You've been trying to take on everything. Yeah, I'm just doing everything, managing myself, uh, booking and uh being the artist and doing edits and all that and just designing my own merch, everything. I've just been trying to do it all myself. I just like being in control and yeah. I feel like it gets done in a more timely manner. Yeah. But I still have people that help me. I have a team of 10, 12 people that are incredible people that help me execute all these visions, but I've definitely taken on more in the booking and kind of managing myself aspect this yeah. year for sure, yeah. That's, I mean, that's big, but especially this many years in, I guess, like, you know, why break bread to people if you, you're you capable of doing it yourself? Absolutely, right? but also managing and whatnot, like, if you really need a, managers will knock on your door when you're ready, and I've had people ask me, and I just, I just find like I could still do it myself better, and once you do get a manager, they're dipping in your pockets too, you know, and that's yeah. not a knock, but it's the level I'm at, the way I stay afloat, and the way I feed myself is just, the more I do myself, the more money flow is coming into my own pockets, Yeah. you know, I mean, I would love to just be making, you know, 10, 20 million dollars a year, then I would have a manager for sure, because yeah. it'd be okay to break off some people, but... I'm okay with doing everything myself. And, yeah, and you know. I think I think that's a mistake a lot of artists make is that they they hire on people to do these roles before they're actually ready for. One hundred, I see it all the time. Yeah. Then they they get mad because they didn't they think they didn't help them enough. But it's like, bro, you just started rapping six months ago, or you just started singing six months ago. You think you should have this, this, and this? Put in some work. Like you've never yeah. even toured. You've done one show, and you sh- and you think you should be on this festival, that festival. It doesn't work like that. You need to grind. Yeah. You know? so. The only time I think it's really worth it at, at infant stages is if you're actually bringing on somebody who's like really connected in the industry and they're bringing opportunities to 100, you 100%. you know which you do get those cases but no, you do 90 percent of the managers and every uh, agents out here they're all that's, the that's fucking nobodies accurate. you know what i mean yeah, no, for you, sure. do you know how many publicists try to book an interview with me and i'm like yo this artist could just hit me directly exactly. you realize this right <laughs> i'm not discrediting anybody's work publicists yeah booking agents all of these things are super key just for where i'm at yeah what i'm doing it's just I, I'm moving the way I'm moving, and it's working for me at this moment. But you know, I'm always looking to expand too. So that's yeah, dope, man. I like to see the independence, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really dope. And um, you know, so one thing I do want to go about too, because I mean, this is this has been a huge moment as of recent. Yeah. Um, the Caskey joint, man. Yeah. Two sides. It's crazy. That shit was wild, man. And shout out to Real Wolf on the video as well too. Shout out to Real Wolf on the video. Flew down to Florida, shot it. Um, that was a crazy day, man. We had so many Cadillacs out and. Caskies is the coolest dude. He was a very humble artist. 
made this song with him on the spot. That was like, I went... Yeah, you guys were in the studio. Yeah, together. I flew down to cook with him in Jacksonville, Florida at uh, Oxford Studios, and we just literally wrote the song on the spot. Picked the first beat that we listened to was the one. Shout out to Starcore. Um, and we just wrote it right there on the spot, and it was so hard. Hung out for the afternoon or the night, and then dipped and then we were like yo like we shouldn't put the song out without a video it's too hard yeah so i flew down last january uh shout out to my guy news he, he set it all up he literally facilitated that whole project he, he he hooked it um i flew down we shot the video real wolf came down and yeah we shot like 80 percent of it in florida in palm coast the rest i shot in uh, Kelowna, bc obviously the mountain the yep. white mountainous uh -huh. scenes are not in uh, florida but yeah we put it together and for the juxtaposition and the parallels of the two Absolutely. sides. Yeah. yeah, but Kasky is the coolest dude. Honestly, they say, you know, don't meet people that you really like or their art because sometimes they can, whatever, treat you differently or yeah. be assholes, for a lack of a better uh, word. But he was the coolest, most humble, down-to-earth dude. Like, what he preaches is what he's about. And, um, yeah, I'm looking to do some more work with him, too, which is definitely a possibility in the near future. So. Ah, dope, man, dope. Yeah, because that right for one, the record rang off. I mean, I you already know the record rang. That's one of those ones you, nobody needs to tell you that. But, um, you know, just to see how much uh, traction it was able to gain as soon as it dropped and stuff, too, Absolutely. is a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Like, I'm, I just, it's nice to see you really, like, get the flowers. Because, I mean, you've had big records before, you know what sure. I mean? But to, that one, that oh, one that went one crazy. Sure, yeah. That the, one went crazy. Doing a video with someone is, is different. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because people pay, you know, you get features from dudes that maybe that verse has been done ten times. It's an acapella flown around in some old manager's yeah. uh, folder somewhere. I've got stuck with those before. That shit happens, you know yeah. what I mean? People getting just pimped out, basically. But this was like, went down, made the music. And the song is is, so, is dope because we made it together. Like, yeah. I don't make music anymore over the internet. Like, I used to, but I just, I can't anymore. I've done, I put my time in. I Yeah. If we're making music, we're in the studio, we're having a five, six hour conversation, we might not even make music that night. Yeah. Like, we're making it together. So, we made it together and that's why the song is cohesive as fuck, you know what I mean? So That's dope. That's it, but yeah, he's, he's a great dude, super humble, and uh, Two Sides is one of my favorite joints this year for sure. Yo, 100%, man, that shit is crazy. And one thing I wanted to ask about too is, um. With the um, with the singles you were dropping, because prior to putting out the No Water in Hell, yeah. you kind of the album went through a couple of name changes and stuff, right? Before it came out, well, a couple concept yeah, changes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was kind of like an album building itself in front of our eyes. It was publicly. like a living organism. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, that's how you worded it actually. Yeah, that was cool. Organism. I. Yeah, I just I was dropping singles, then it turned into an EP, and then it turned, then I extended that EP. It was called Somewhere for a bit, but I just I just was dropping singles and then I was adding them into a folder and just re-releasing them under a, its own individual name. And then while I was doing that, I was like, man, I have so many singles and Lucy's like this that I love that never found a, an album. Yeah. Where I'm like, man, they, they needed to go somewhere. So I started just thinking, man, I'm gonna just release all the songs that I love the most of the last 18 months that haven't really got any love. And some I, I released already, like three of them. And I just, I remixed them, I remastered them, sequenced it all together. and. Yeah, I dropped the singles and it turned into an EP, then a longer EP, then I removed that EP and re-uploaded that EP as an entire album. Um, yeah, with 16 songs, which is No Water in Hell. And that's yeah. all the songs I made in the last like year and a half, they ended up on there basically. They didn't have an album. And it just turned out, it's kind of a mixtape approach, yeah. but it's my favorite body of work is some of my favorite artists in the country and also outside the country all making crazy music together, amazing production and just... It's melodies, dark eclectic vibes from all corners of Canada and come, you know, and the Millies and Caskey, but yeah, that's dope, man. Like yeah. I love like the just yeah, watching it unfold in front of our eyes was really cool. Another thing I wanted to ask you though too was I liked there was a certain cohesiveness with the way you released the singles, and it was in the artwork. I noticed that you had a, one single photographer do all the photos. Yeah, and my what are those freelance Flint? Yeah, what were those pictures from? Is that like a is that like a fair in like Vancouver or some shit or like yeah, somewhere from the some for just random in Vancouver. It's all. Really? Vancouver, like, uh, some is at the Hastings Racetrack. Okay. Hastings, uh, like, yeah, it's a classic um, spot. Like, yeah. it's, it's, like, over 100 years old, a spot. And some, a lot of them were from the fair, from the Hastings P&E. Okay. Uh, some were from downtown Vancouver. But my homie Freelance Flynn, he took all the pictures on black and white film. He wasn't even doing it for me. Yeah. He was just, he's, he's one of the most creative dudes I know. He, he does, he raps, he runs the back-end recording studios in Vancouver. He does... Uh, he produces, he's a crazy camera wizard, he does like crazy trippy um, videography work, but he also does black and white film photography just for fun, and, uh, and I looked at all these photographs, I'm like, bro, can I just have all these? Like, 
So they go, yeah, sure, boom, gave me them, and I just turned them. That, it kept That's the thematic, dope. yeah, and I just... That's dope. In, in a time where everything's AI, so digital, I was like, man, I want to go with, like, black and white photography for every single cover for this for yeah. this album, basically. So, yeah. See, I love that, because I was trying to, you know, after the first one or two, I'm like, I started to notice the cohesion, yeah. but I'm like, what are these pictures of? It's like, I'm like, does this symbolize something in its childhood? Well, it just, it's, it symbolizes, yeah, and that's funny that you say that, because it just symbolized Vancouver. I've been there 20 years. Yep. Symbolized, like, l- legendary spots of Vancouver, you know, and they all represent something for me behind the song title as well. Dope. But then at the end of it, you see the title. The cover was actually a photo from my great-grandfather. It was like a 100-year-old picture, or all like maybe an 80-year-old picture, 75-year-old picture of my great-grandfather. My grandpa is a young kid. And most of those people are, you know, has, have passed by now, RIP. But um, I just found my mother showed me this picture, and I was like, man, this picture fits in with all the other photographs that I have. And I, I just decided to use it, and it just—it was kind of sinister, but also lovely at the same time. Yeah. And what the whole project really meant for me was, you know, there's no water in hell, but if you're in hell, you're looking for water because you're trying to survive. So it's really like a survival story. Okay. That's what okay. it was yeah. for me. You know, it was even if you're down there, you gotta, you gotta search a way to get out of there. That's yeah. basically what it was for me. So. Dope, I dig it, man, and it's. And I'm glad you brought up the album cover too, because that's actually exactly what I was gonna ask. Where that's did a, that fit into family. the? Like, I, I figured that's it, my family. That's my family in was. Italy in like that's 1933 dope. or something. Crazy, like that. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Looking sharp as hell yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh yeah, dappered out in, in right? Italy, Italian, Italian suits, suits and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah. And so, no one thing I do too, because I know um, we only got limited time before things start going, oh, but. One thing I really want to touch with you on is because as soon as I seen you post the first one, I'm like, this is this is content in an interview that needs to happen. And you, uh, for a while, were doing something called Fun Facts. Fun Facts. I'm still doing them. I just, yeah, I just been so busy with other stuff, but I love the Fun Facts, yeah. Uh, well, I want to run a few by you okay. and get a little bit oh, of the backstory. Let's go. If that's cool with you. <laughs> so, um, first, you were the first Canadians to get a feature in a video from Ritz. That's correct. Northwest Division, me and Hungry. Uh, it's the first time he ever came to Canada. He, um, we were, we've been listening to Ritz way before, like three, four, or five years before he came to Canada. Um, and when he did come, we obviously we, we knew he was coming. Then we hit him up like his, through his agent. He liked our music. We were on that, you know, we were listening to a lot of Yellow Wolf and whatnot. So yeah. the styles kind of like coincided. And we sent him a joint. He really liked it, and he dropped a crazy verse on it. And he happened to come to Vancouver for his first show. And we said, Yo, bro, let's. Let's do a video while you're here. And we shot it at the venue while he was doing sound check. That's why we shot it at the venue nightclub no on shit. Granville Street, Vancouver. Yeah, we were the first Canadians to get a verse, feature, and a video from Ritz. Yeah. That's dope. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Man. Northwest Division, Hungry and I, yeah. That's super yeah, dope. Yeah. And utilizing the resources too, right? Like, oh, you're coming. Yeah, fuck, we'll just come shoot We it shot it venue. in 45 minutes, yep. bro. How to do it, you know? Just, just it's not the visual. greatest video, but the song, we're talking about, you know, people in the, in the, in the VIP lineup trying to rap in his ear and yep. all this so it was perfect like the setting was perfect so the song was perfect to shoot there that's why we were able to pull it off like, that's quickly. amazing yeah. that's amazing man another um another one on the list here actually i'm not going to go in order there's something else i want to ask about first <laughs> tell us about the diamond d album appearance and how that happened uh well during covid i went on this competition on sway and it was just like a 16 16- no, what was it? There's like 300 MCs that entered or whatever. Only 16 got selected. I got selected. But it's just to rap on the same... Or to rap on any beat, they picked the, their favorites or whatever. But it's all online during COVID. I was doing it on my phone and whatnot, obviously. Um, so I did it because there's nothing else to do. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll enter it, you know? And I got deep. I went into the final four, didn't end up winning, which was a whole other story to tell. I don't even want to get into it, but who cares? It's all good. But out of that... Out of taking an L or not winning the competition, Diamond D hit me up because he's seen it because he follows Sway and Sway reshared one of the things, uh, one of the videos I did or verses and Diamond D hit me up. It's like, yo, you're crazy, bro. Like, I would love to work with you. Do you want to be on my next record? Jeez. I was like, absolutely. So he just took it from there. He approached me and um, he sent me a beat like five months later. It's like, okay, cool. I, I wrote to it right away, sent it back to him. Didn't hear from him from like for, for almost uh, maybe a, over a year. Really? And and then all of a sudden he draw he just has a video of him listening to my verse and then he says this is the song's going on my album. Then he hits me up, all get all the ASCAP, BMI, SoCan information, everything, all that. And uh, 
And that's it. Yeah, I'm com- and the new album is gonna drop pretty soon here, and I'm on it. And that's it. It that's all it spawned from an internet competition on Sway. He hit me up, loved the verse, and he said, yo, just rap really hard like this on one of my beats. That's fucking amazing. And Diamond D is such a legend. Oh, it's too, legendary. What a fucking honor. It's legendary. Digging in the crates. It's crazy. No, like, his, if you look, it's, it's nuts. There's nothing. There's that was maybe one, like, you know, because I've been grinding and grinding. Yeah. Once in a while, a, a legend or an OG reaches out. It's nice to be appreciated by, I mean... This guy worked with Big L. Big you know L, I mean? Lord like, Finesse. Yeah, what, you know what do you want me to say? Like, exactly. that's, that's it. It's, Nothing but top tier MCs. Like, it's crazy. You can't get a nah, for man. your pen. You can't get a higher compliment. I was than very. Somebody from I was blessed. Like, I was yeah. blessed. That's fucking amazing, man. Blessed. Um, another, so God thank the internet, man. Hey, right? You know what I mean? Right? The internet. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so another one I want to touch on too is um, one time you were at a Ghostface show performing in your younger days and you kicked a speaker. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, we were again. It was me, Hungry, and I, Northwest Division, because that was our group back then. That was before I was really doing junk stuff solo. So we were rocking the Rickshaw Theater uh, on Hastings in Vancouver. Uh, it was Ghostface Killa, and I think it was Ghostface Killa and Action Bronson that oh, night. Shit. I might be tripping. Could just be Ghostface. But yeah, we were rapping, and there is it was a, this is a big venue. It's a death metal like metal bar, right? Metal club. It's pretty big. And um, I was just vibing. I was jumping up and down, just going crazy. And I, I, did, I didn't mean, I, I guess I was just kicked my leg out. And there's a, one of those tall stack speakers. <laughs> and the shit just went, whoa, boom. And it just hit this girl. And it was fucking bad, dude. It was bad. Hey, but, but I did not stop. We kept rocking. Ah, I was making eye contact. Her boyfriend, I remember, it's just chaos. I did not stop. It was kosher. Like, he, they understood that I didn't do it on purpose. And I was rapping, like, do you want me to stop or not? Because And they pulled the thing off. It was cool. They got up. And it was chill. I went and dapped them up and bought them drinks after. Oh, but shit. that was a real thing. It, and it was one of our first shows, too. It was like, man, I fucked it up, dude. I, can't, I almost killed somebody. I kicked the speaker. But You're it made for a good story. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Junk was the original Astro World. <laughs> yeah, just I, I'm I'm glad no one got actually seriously hurt. Oh there. man, damn, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that is a crazy one. Yeah. So another cool story that I think uh, is worth touching on is um, when you recorded "Stupid and Ugly," you actually recorded the whole album in ju- in um, Snag the Ripper's shoe closet. All of it. It was his. Yeah, it was his shoe closet. We he had a little room. With the computer and a couple speakers, and then in the shoe closet, it was where the, we just hung a mic, and yeah, we did it all there in maybe two weekends. So I went there for one weekend, recorded half of it, and went there the next weekend, recorded the other half. He, he basically engineered the whole thing and got it touched up, obviously, by Jamie Q's. Yep. He just brought it up, a shout out to Jamie, but um, yeah, that was all done in his closet. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, out in rural BC. Uh, at that time where he was living, so that's great. And that album still, like uh, to this day, on your Spotify, it's always in your popular. Yeah. No, it's it it, 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 it is. Always... I love it. I love that album. Because um, that was kind of a transformative album for you, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it, was, it was the fir- like yeah, it was the first. The thing is, Merc was on it. That Merc was featured on it. Snack was featured on it. Merc was just ascending into like a whole other level. Yeah. So that's why I dropped that as the first single, and I caught. Merc right at the perfect time. That's why that's like my second or third, like second, I think, biggest song. Caught him at a really good time. That helped bring attention to every other record on it. So every song in that's got, there's not a song on that album that doesn't have like over two, three hundred thousand streams. Three or four of them have a million. So yeah, it's an album that it was perfect timing. Snack was, snack is snack. Yeah. Merc was ascending and then Snack took me to Europe two times during that album so I also got to rock it and sell it and a lot of people got a lot of it and I I toured Europe with Onyx with that album as well so it was a lot of eyes you know I'd playing venues for 1200 1500 people sometimes 3000 mini festivals and that that got a lot of eyes a lot of attention a lot of live shows a lot of big tours and shows as a main support Merc and Snack on the record. It was really good timing. So and yeah, that's a beautiful thing, man. I like. I just interviewed Atmosphere recently, and even just you kind of describing kind of that year and that album reminds me very much of when he spoke about when they did Seven's Travels because they had right. done the licensing deal with Epitaph, right. and right at that same time, due to that Epitaph connection, they were able to get Warp Tour, but at the same time, they're also they were able to get the Balance video on MTV. Yeah. So it was like a perfect storm yeah. of all the like these multiple things all at one time that really kind of they're like so from 
from that moment forward, they're like, it's never really gone back down. You know what I mean? It's no, like you got to be prepared, though. Forward. They've been grinding way before that, too. Yep. Being prepared, exactly. then things will fall in order. If you are prepared and you, you're, you're about the work, one, yep. if you're A, talent, B, but you also got to be prepared to work. And if you've been doing that, like, like I said, yep. things will open up for you. And if you keep with your work ethic, you know, more doors will open. And you, yeah, and it's that it's album cool literally has up. brought me, you know, with streams, it's like here and like you know it's never going down it's yep. always growing every yep. year a bit right so it's and then everything you move from there is another step up the absolutely. ladder from there it's absolutely. a beautiful thing man absolutely. and um another one i i um i do want to bring up as well too if you want to touch on it it's up to you but um one time you got your gun stuck in your ribs after a freestyle battle in a smoking pit yeah i, I was at a media club outside in, in vancouver i was at a rap battle uh I don't even remember who the hell I was battling, but I think the final was between me and this dude named Paper Chase. It was the first time I won a rap battle in Vancouver. I didn't even want to go. I was like shook, like uh, on some eight mile shit. Like, yeah. not hate to reference that, like, but <laughs> it was really, I was like, no, I mean, I'm scared, bro. Like my homie signed me up, uh, Dark One signed me up, my, my, my boy. And uh, I ended up going and I tore through a few guys, but one of the guys like, yeah, his homies, one of his homies ended up putting a fucking gun in my ribs that night in the smoke pit. Like, because he was fucking tripping about some shit I was saying. And my other guy came in and was like, this bigger dude, and squashed that shit. And, but it was scary. I was fucking shook, bro. Of course. I was like, I, I just knew to Vancouver. I was only living there like a year or two. Oh, really? Shit. And I was like, man, what the fuck? This is crazy, bro. But like, <laughs> but I ended up winning the competition that night and going and just winning I don't know maybe it fueled me more but wait was that that same uh, other fun fact you posted where you're holding the five the, I think it was no, 500 that was bucks different. that was okay, a different okay, one yeah okay. that was like rent money six or something oh, okay, like that okay. yeah. I actually used it for rent money no it was called rent money and it was it was for rent money was, yeah. I won like 500 bucks or something like that yeah. <laughs> that's fucking amazing yeah. another, another one I thought that um, would be interesting to touch on was uh, your 2017 tour stop in Israel yeah, um, again, we were there with Onyx. I went to the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Uh, we had a day off and we decided to go there instead of the, the sea and float around in some salt water. But uh, yeah, we went and, we, and it was a beautiful day. We shot, we actually shot a video that day. Some of it saved me with Snack the Ripper. Uh, some of it was shot in Berlin. Some of it was shot in, in Israel, literally. And um, it was like a beautiful tourist day. We got a video off in that day, but we also just rocked this venue in Tel Aviv. It was beautiful there. And it was very... I'm, I'm not like into Christ or anything like that. I'm not a religious person, but I could definitely feel some energy in that city. You know, the birthplace of Christ, yeah. they say. And it was, it was, That's it, what everybody says. That There's a certain energy that just radiates. Crazy energy. And I was there with Onyx, Snack the Ripper. Uh, the the man the the tour agent the the tour manager Perry and uh, DJ Illegal from the Snow Goons we were looking hell out of place there but it was a good time and it was it was one of the t highlights of my life like it was a hilarious time killed it and um, I don't think I'll ever have another opportunity to go to places like this especially with music like, yeah, yeah music took me to Jerusalem that's like, fucking what? insane you know you I'm like it, right? yo okay this is this is beautiful like, that is a fucking yeah. beautiful thing man yeah. that's like you know. Most, you know, myself included, you'll pay to travel the world. So oh, music for sure. can fucking uh, take you there. 100. It's like, Jesus. 100 percent. You can't ask for better. Things. No, that's like, that's highlights. That's the highlights that you live for. Is, yeah. yeah. Music can take you to some crazy, amazing places that, you know, I don't think I would ever have made it over there. You know? Yeah. And it makes the shitty things that happen in this journey because, uh, you know, we all glorify the good, but there's a lot of bad shit that happens in the music game. Also, there's it a lot of bad shit that happens in every, in every job, in every yep. situation. There's ups and downs. Facts. Man, so, so. Facts. So yeah. It's about how you navigate out of them that keeps you afloat. So. And we're going to touch on one more before we wrap it up because I know that uh, probably got to get inside. Poor, you're, you're shaking, my poor guy. Sorry, brother. Cameraman's dying. I'm sorry, my guy. Um, but the last one I want to touch on, because I thought it was an interesting uh, story as well, is how was Northwest Division formed? Northwest Division formed, it was me, Catch-22, that's my, um, actually Catch-23, pardon me. Um, that's Cole Brownstones, my boy, for life, household, co-founder as well, um, and Hungry, it was us three. And we were just rocking over some Eng, boom bap beats. Like, I moved to Vancouver, those guys kind of took me in, like, yo... I lived in the same neighborhood as them and went to house parties and rap with those guys and we just obviously became homies and so we decided to start a group because um, we were all working together and living in the same neighborhoods and Eng was just a beast, still is with the beats and uh, we was just rocking over Eng beeps, very boom, boom bappy um, and then we kind of grew out of it and started just wanting to do more double time hype 
crazy club bangers. So Catch 23 took a step down. He didn't want to rap anymore. He focused on real estate and managing clubs and whatnot, which oh, he still sure. does to, today. He's killing it. And, uh, and me and Hungry kind of just became the, the rappers of Northwest Division. But Hungry came up with the name Northwest Division, and it was kind of an homage to uh, our, where, where our hockey uh, conference was at yeah. the time. And um, I don't know, sounded dope, and it was in that particular. The, the, he came. We're all big hockey guys back then. Those guys especially. So yeah. in Northwest Division, and it was a it was a division that no longer would exist. It was oh. the last year of it. So we liked it, and we re- kind of claimed it for our That's own. And dope. So I Northwest like Division, because there used to be the Northwest Division. Now it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. I think the year we decided to name ourselves that, the year after it was gone or something. Uh, but that was a Hungry came up with that. That's so dope. yeah, and NWD. Did, and, and you and Hungry, did you meet each other from battling? Yeah, we met each other battling. Um, we knew each other, like seen each other a couple times here yeah. and there, never said anything really. And then we met each other in the first King of the Dot battle, Vancouver edition, Crazy. in a park after, you know, battled. And uh, that was it, became like best friends. And to this day, we're still rocking like 12 years later, 11 years later. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Man. And that's my household brother. And him and I are just pushing household and getting. Younger dudes coming up under our wing, you know what I mean? Putting them on alumni and building a whole brand around it, not just music. Um, yeah, that's what we're really focused on pushing right now is the household brand. The household, man. It was all part of the household. Oh, man. there's so many people, bro. There is. It's Hungry. It's Eng. Imperative. Like Mason Rex. Starcore. Freelance. And Messiah. IR. Evan. Just Reed. Alumni. District Apollo. Uh... Oh uh, man, Jamie Q's like Preem Diesel, Eng, and Cole, and Catch Twenty Three, and yeah. Shot by Devin, and yeah, the, everyone at the back end recording. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of people, man. Neeks so, up north. This is I could go on for days, bro. Hey, yeah. That's a beautiful thing, man. I yeah. love seeing what you're building. Imperative and hey, big up so, to Imperative which is too. who's here tonight. Who's probably wondering where the fuck I am? Yeah, so we'll f- we'll finish it up with that, man. Uh, before we let the before we let you go, just let the people know, uh, you know, where they can find you, all that good stuff. Yo. My name is Junk. That's literally my handle on all my socials. My name is Junk, all one word. Uh, on Spotify and all the music streaming platforms, it's just Junk. But um, also, my name is Junk.com for any of my content, videos, socials, anything that's easy, merch, tickets, whatever. But definitely stream the latest album I just dropped, No Water in Hell, Volume 1. Um, I'm just blessed to do what I do, and I appreciate your guys' time as well. Hey, so no thank doubt, you. man. Appreciate your time. Thank you, bro. Dude. Appreciate it. Nice I got to warm up my hand now. Hey. And until next time, man, this is another episode of Rap Nerds. My name is Junk, and we out. Let's go. Cool.